Everybody. What's happening everybody? So it's Friday, so I was hoping a few more people would be on um, on here and we're gonna talk about blues lakes now. You know, it's Friday afternoon, it might be, I don't know, in the Midwest, right? In Chicago it's probably about, I don't know, five o'clock, six o'clock, so um, thought more people would be on and um, Got my trusty Les Paul here. We're gonna talk about some blues licks, uh, how pertinent they are to all styles of music. Uh, literally everything from bluegrass to singer-songwriter to gospel to blues itself to rock and roll, all that stuff. So when I think of blues licks, I'm thinking of like the history of blues. I'm thinking Chuck Berry. Chuck Berry was the first um, real rock star. He invented rock and roll. Chuck Berry in 1955 invented rock and roll and what he would do on the guitar um, is he would play these double stops he would do stuff like this he would do right you, you've all heard that but what's crazy what's so so fun about it is he uses these two notes at once that's what double stops are right he, he uses um, his first hit was Maybelline. He was signed to Chess Records um, and Chess Records was a Chicago record group and um, they really really broke uh, rock and roll together. So in 1955 he had this smash hit Maybelline and then he had Roll Over Beethoven and all this stuff and he would play more than one note at once. That's what double stops are. So I want you guys to think about that like as you know, you're trying to incorporate. Think think about this. Think about the fact that Beverly and May is not to jump too far, but Jibu Smith did stuff like this. Doesn't that sound like the blues? That's just the blues. That's just the blues scale dressed up, right? And Chuck Berry was the originator of all of this stuff. So I want you guys to take this and just play a couple notes, you know, instead of playing your pentatonic scale, say you have a, your A pentatonic, right? Say you have... Let's try playing... Try playing double stops. Try incorporating more than one note at once. So after after Chuck Berry, um, well before Chuck Berry, there was Muddy Waters. He really, really like 1948. You talk blues. He can't be satisfied. Um, that was it. That was it. That's when the world changed. Um, now we fast forward a little bit. We get to BB King. BB um, King had this really, really cool thing where he would. Everybody knows B.B. King, right? You know, your mom knows B.B. King. There's a reason. There's a reason because he plays so soulfully. He plays so amazing. Um, and he didn't need that many notes, right? So this is one of the big takeaways, guys, is you don't need that many notes to get the job done, right? You, you can um, be simple and effective. You know, very simple, very effective. So say we're in the key of A again. <laughs> Simple, effective. 
just play very very simple you don't have to be shredding and doing arpeggios right uh, you can take these blues riffs right and you'll notice that like modern day singer songwriters use them right what about have you guys recognize this well that sounds like John Mayer right but to me to me what it sounds like is a blues lick it sounds like BB King it sounds like BB King playing his thing Right? Eric Clapton, Wonderful Tonight. What does that sound like to me? Uh, sounds like B.B. King. So all these blues licks now are used in songs, right? Yeah, they're used as a way to write songs and they're, you know, it doesn't matter. Like I, I mentioned Beverly Mays earlier, um, uh, Before I Let Go. Um, it literally just opens up with Jubu ripping a guitar solo. And all of it's just a pentatonic blues, you know. And it, it to say just a pentatonic blues is a really an oversimplification, right? Because it's uh, it's really about the emotion and the feel, right? It's about the emotion. You can have a couple notes and put all the emotion into the in the world into it. So that's what I want you guys to take away, if nothing else from this video, is just simple notes and just give it your all, like. Put every ounce of whatever you're feeling that day into the notes, right? You don't need to be drilling all of the all the modes. You don't need to be drilling everything. You need to focus on putting emotion into the notes that you do know, right? The rest will come. All the rest of the stuff will come. But what won't come is if you learn everything and then realize, dang, like I have nothing to say even with all this language, right? Some people have a big vocabulary, <clears throat> know every word in the dictionary, got nothing to say. So, and some people know just a very, very, you know, small amount of words and they're very, very effective, right? So, think about that. Think about how you can use what you already know to be more effective in your style of playing. And that's really what the blues teaches you. It teaches you emotion, right? Um, you, you want to be able to play simply. Well, here we go. Get that, that vibrato happening. Right? Play, you don't have to be constantly doing a machine gun of notes, right? You, you can play something and, you know, let it hang there. Silence, you know? You can do some stuff. Silence, you know? Silence. Right? All that stuff. You know, you can play very, very simple note choices as long as you're emoting, as long as you're building your solo, and as, as long as you are just connecting. So, uh, now, if we're talking blues, uh, I would be remiss if we forgot um, Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix took the blues and he electrified it to like the max you know he pushed guitars he wasn't the first to push guitars into overdrive but he took it to the next level right so Jimi Hendrix was playing some stuff he played like Red House you know that kind of thing simple right it's, he's not doing too much but it's all the emotion behind it right and so jimmy took guitar playing blues playing just to the stratosphere right as far as overdrive as far as effects as far as like do you think jimmy hendrix knew what a mixolydian scale was do you think jimmy hendrix knew what a dominant altered scale was or a lydian no now most of us are not blessed enough to have the kind of insight that jimmy has but i think it's important to remind yourself, like, Jimmy was working with what he thought sounded good, right? And and from his heart, right? He's, he's playing, and that's where, like, the blues comes in, right? He, he's just playing um, pentatonic licks. He's playing, you know, some major stuff. But it's nothing, you, you never hear in Jimmy do, you know? You know, and... 
that's just that's who he was, right? So, and he's considered one of the greatest guitar players of all time. So, why do you think that is? Why do we think that is? Um, do we really think that knowledge is? Um, do we really think that knowledge is gonna you know take us there? Because what I'm trying to get at is the blues are going to get you to a place where you are focusing on minimal notes, but putting all your emotion into it. Minimal notes and all your emotion, right? And emotion comes in different forms. So if you guys want to check out my free master class, it's in the description, but I'll give you kind of like a taste. So like the way you can translate emotion is one, one way is um, vibrato. So instead of playing a note like this, you can play like this. You wiggle it, right? That's, uh, here's another way to have emotion. You bend notes instead of going. You bend notes like that. Always have that vibrato, right? Uh, another way to um, have emotion and like, you know, translate is have authority when you're playing. You know, like, don't pick lightly, right? And just put it in an affirmative way. Pick with aggression, pick with intent. So l listen to the difference. If I'm picking very, very lightly and softly and just like willy nilly about it, like that's what it sounds like, right? It sounds like I'm shaking your hand and I'm going like this. You know, you want a firm handshake, right? And that, that sounds to me like picking harder, you know, picking more aggressively. Pick aggressive. And that's how you can get the emotion to come through, right? If you just have those three things, like vibrato, if you just have um, bending, and you pick with authority, pick with aggression, uh, you know, firm handshake, uh, you're gonna you're gonna get your point across. Um, I just saw somebody in the chat say, uh, "Did I do a lesson on the BB box?" Yes, uh, I have a lesson on the BB box, and you can, you should go check that out. Um, so, yeah, the BB box, if you don't, if you guys aren't familiar, I could just, so you don't have to leave this video, is essentially just a few notes that uh, BB King would play and use. Um, so instead of playing um, the pentatonic scale down here, he would do it like right here. You know, and you can get all the tabs in the, in the other video, but it would sound like this. be all this like all that stuff I'm doing is on the top three strings and it's just really in this like visually it's just like right here you know in the key of A and my first finger is the indicator of what uh, what's happening so I like this finger I said okay where's an A note on the B string where is an A note on the B string um, and you just go up to the 10 that's the A note there you go no problem um, so um, so, so we're at Jimi Hendrix now, and where do we go? Well, we got to talk about Dwayne Allman. Dwayne Allman was in the Allman Brothers. He was the slide guitar player and one, the brother of Greg Allman. He died very young, like 24, but it, he still had time to revolutionize the guitar. He took something like this, a slide, right? And he would put it on his finger, and he would play. And I don't have this guitar set up for slide because I like to have my guitar a little bowed so I don't get the... But you'll kind of hear what I'm saying is that slide gives you, this is some more bluesy stuff, but slide gives you a way to go in between notes, right? It's almost like you're not limited to the frets. You get like, you can play an A like this. Right. You can go flat and go sharp, right? And that that's really, really cool effect sometimes. So you can hear I'm a little flat sometimes. And normally you tune in open, um, normally you tune your guitar right in open, like open E or open G. We can do a whole other video um, on that. But what the slide allows you to do is get all those in between nuances, almost like a singer, right? You're like Aretha Franklin or something like that. And that's what Dwayne Allman was a master, master at that. Um, so check him out. If you don't know who he is, 
check out Dwayne Allman. Um, and then as we move through like history, uh, Prince was a great blues guitar player. What do you think Let's Go Crazy ends with? <laughs> blues ending to you, right? Right? The, the whole song ends in a blues, right? And that's because Prince was very, very privy and knowledgeable of the history of music, and he was a blues musician, among other things, among a fantastic songwriter, among an amazing performer, and, you know, the list goes on, producer, entertainer, drummer, piano player, you name it. Um, but he had a history. He was steeped in the history of blues. And you really, really got to know this stuff, right? Um, and if we keep going, um, we talk about Stevie Ray Vaughan. Stevie Ray Vaughan, to me, was like the height of clarity, you know, as far as like just clean fidelity goes, recordings, you know, the recordings were pristine. His rhythm was impeccable. And he was just playing with such ferocity. I think if I played like Stevie Ray Vaughan for 10 seconds, I'd be worn out for a week. You know, he's just playing very thick strings. He's playing like 13s at a minimum, which is it's crazy. It's crazy. He's like got a gorilla hand. Um, and he's playing with very, uh, like a lot of intent, right? Um, and to me, Stevie Ray Vaughan has that tone. It has the fidelity. Um, and yeah, like Bruno said, Stevie Ray Vaughan is God, right? Um, now, if you, if you check out a record, there's a record where Stevie Ray Vaughan and Albert King sit down and play together. And you'll notice a lot of similarities. Uh, Albert King was a great blues guitar player that came decades before Stevie Ray Vaughan. Um, and Stevie Ray Vaughan was influenced by Albert King. There's nothing wrong with that, right? There's, that's amazing. Um, so if, as we're going through the history of like blues and that kind of thing, um, I want you guys to take note of how different people approach it. So Stevie Ray Vaughan always would tune his Stratocaster half step down um, and he would play, um, he would play, you know, stuff like, you know. And he would do something like that. blues stuff like that like but to him I feel like when I hear Steve Ray Vaughan I'm hearing like perfect rhythm and I'm hearing crazy good tone you know like um I can like I, I, man those records growing up I had the CDs growing up I don't know if anybody else is old enough to remember that um but I had the CDs growing up and wow Texas Flood um that that was a record right it's just and I don't even, some of the stuff I can like sing back to you, I don't even know if I'd be able to play it right now. Um, I just, you know, it's tuned down a half step, it's on a strat. Um, but Steve Ray Vaughan was one of those guys that took rhythm and just tone and mastered it, right? And we keep going, we, we gotta keep going right through the ages and, you know, there was Eric Johnson, amazing, amazing, uh, you know, he, he pushed the boundaries of what blues did, right? He he loved Jimi Hendrix, right? He has covers of Manic Depression and Steve Ray Vaughan. Um, but he pushed the boundaries, right? He was, he was incredible. Again, all, like throughout the ages, even, even as you come to more modern times, right? You get into the 2000s, you get into that era. Um, blues and knowing where blues music comes from is so, so important to taking guitar solos, um, to writing songs, and to just understand the history of where this music comes from. Like, music comes from the blues. Um, that, that, and so if you want to know how to play jazz, you got to know the blues. If you want to know how to play gospel, you got to know the blues. If you want to know how to play bluegrass, if you want to know how to do singer-songwriter stuff, Guarantee you, Carole King, James Taylor, they all know the blues. You know, James Taylor has a song, I'm a steamroller, steam baby, gonna walk all over you, right? Um, I'm a steamroller, baby. And that's a blues song, right? All, like, literally everybody you look up to uh, understands the blues. Um, even even hip-hop uh, is reminiscent of the blues, right? Uh, 
we talk about these guys like Muddy Waters pulling up to the recording studios, Chess Records in the 50s with their Cadillacs, you know, and like an unprecedented amount of success and wealth. Um, it's mirrored in James Brown, uh, you know, a decade later, and it's mirrored several decades later in hip hop where there's, you know, wealth being accumulated uh, by people that never used to have it, right? And, you know, we, we might be getting beyond the guitar, but it's important to know that the guitar is a reflection of society. It's a reflection of what's going on in the world, right? So it doesn't just exist in a vacuum. There are real things happening. There's cold wars happening. There's civil rights movements happening, you know, and like being cognizant of all that stuff will help inform your choices, help, you know, inform your guitar playing. It just make you a better, more well-rounded individual. Um, so, um, and then of course, you know, we, we talk about 2000s, you talk about John Mayer. Um, and John Mayer, to me, is like, again, one of the pinnacles of somebody that's got it all right. He's got amazing songwriting chops, he's got amazing guitar chops, and he's got amazing tone. You know, put that together, that's a pretty deadly combination, right? And, um, he, yeah, he plays beautifully, he plays like himself, right? And Steve Ray Vaughan is an influence, Jerry Garcia is an influence, but he's got his own thing going on. Um, and, and yeah, again, but like... Like, yeah, like I was talking about earlier, you know, he, he has songs like Gravity. Right, but to me that just sounds like the B.B. King box. Right, it's just, it's just like dressed up in a different way. It's got a, it's got a different outfit on. Um, but it, it comes from... This comes from the blues. And then, you know, there's great modern day titans of blues, you know, Eric Gales, Joe Bonamas, uh, Josh Smith, Kirk Fletcher, you know, the list goes on. And really the torch is being passed and like the baton is being passed to new people who, if you really, really want to understand what's going on, check out Eric Gales because that dude plays with such fire in his heart that it's almost like just go to a show and you'll see what I'm what I'm talking about Kingfish yep Kingfish is incredible too Kingfish is yeah I mean he's a young young kid you know I think he might be 23 years old um, incredible somebody that has the voice too Kingfish is one of those guys it's just it's just incredible so you know anyways this blues music is being carried on and um, these licks are showing up all over the place but you know it's of course bigger than just the licks right it's a uh, it's about everything else, you know? It's about the history and understanding where stuff comes from. Uh, Rajesh asked what the most popular music uh, today is in the US. Well, I think the number one streamed person on Spotify is The Weeknd. And then there's like, you know, up there is like Ariana Grande and Beyonce. And um, so I would say like Drake, you know, it's, I would say more R&B pop. That's the number one selling music. Um, now it doesn't mean there's not a huge um, market for other things, you know. There are a lot of people that tour, like Derek Trucks, um, and you know they, they do fine. Susan Tedeschi. There's a, there's a huge market for everybody, you know. There's enough there's enough food to go around the table for everybody. So, but as far as like what's the biggest selling thing? Yeah, it's it's pop and R and B, hip hop, that kind of thing. So, but again, like I was saying, like. Um, uh, Rajesh was saying, is blues popular only in certain parts of the U.S.? Uh, no, blues is popular everywhere. Um, it's just, it's, certain people have different tastes, right? I like Coke, you like Pepsi, I like, you know, hamburgers, you like hot dogs, and everybody's different, right? And I think the thing that's most appealing to everybody, like, is pop music, is popular, right? Um, and, you know, right now there's a gumbo of pop in like R&B and hip hop, um, but there's, you know, people still go and flock to see Joe Bonamassa and Kingfish and Eric Gales and Kirk Fletcher and Josh Smith and Derek Trucks and John Mayer was probably the highest selling person um, as far as like ticket sales, um, who I would like lump into that blues category. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just like, there's something for everybody, right? Um, so, um, but again, 
so so back to this discussion, kind of wrapping this up here, guys. Um, these licks, uh, I'm showing you a bunch of licks all the way back from, <laughs> wow, Chuck Berry in 1955 to all the way up to John Mayer, right? And, you know, the person that started all this is Muddy Waters in 1948, Can't Be Satisfied, signed with Chess Records, um, and they kind of were made for each other. Uh, he he started, it's literally the simplest song. It's like, uh, he, he was playing the electric guitar, though, which is important because at the time it was mainly just acoustic guitar players and uh, in order to like he, he moved from the south up to Chicago and in Chicago you needed you know more you needed amplification right and just embracing technology is really 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 important um, so yeah the, the the torch keeps getting passed right and there's a lot we can learn from blues music um, so, you know, if, 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 if you've been like the kind of person to be like, nah, blues is hokey or it's not for me, or, you know, it's one of those things that I won't derive anything useful from, I would challenge you because I met students of mine that don't dig the blues. And I get that as a preference, but just to be aware of the history of music, um, you have to talk about the blues. Like, you can't write a book about music um, in the United States without mentioning the blues. Um, Jerry says, yeah, you love the blues, it's a gateway to jazz. Absolutely, that's a great great way to put it, right? Um, blues existed before jazz, and everything came out of New Orleans, right? Everything came, that was a port city in the early 1900s, right? So all, like, you know, you'd have everything from operas to, you know, it, everything. It was just a gumbo. It was a port and everything was happening right there and you get crazy music. You get American music that is just a gumbo of all these wonderful things that are heard around the world. Um, so, um, yeah. It's, I just wanted to come on and, and just talk about the blues because on this channel I don't think I've mentioned it enough and like really emphasized how important the blues are and to me, it's just like about that sheer emotion, that sheer like, what are you feeling in the moment and just expressing it, right? And I was telling you how to do the, the emotional stuff, right? You can use vibrato, you can bend the notes, and you can play with like intent, right? You play like you're shaking somebody's hand firmly, you know, so you attack the string with intent, you know, you don't want to have like a limp handshake, you know? Um, and those will just get you started, guys. So. Um, if you guys are just watching, uh, give this video a thumbs up. It's my birthday coming up, so I'm going to sign off here. It's my birthday over the weekend, so I'm going to go enjoy myself and play some blues. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe hang out by a pool. Um, but, uh, but yeah, and I also have a free master class in the description if you guys want to check it out. It kind of goes into more detail. It does go into more detail about how to play more emotionally, how to play more soulfully, and... Yeah, it's just it's just super super important, guys. So um, that's why we're all here, right? We're trying to get um, trying to get better, right? We're all trying to get better, and I'm trying to give you guys the tools to do that. Um, and harmony is important, chords are important, scales are important. But the number one thing to keep in mind: never lose it. You know, in the rear view mirror, always have it like front and center is the emotion of everything. Um, so, yeah, make sure you are speaking and have something worthwhile to say on your instrument. And that can be something very, very simple. Trust me, I'm not a shredder. I don't play fast. I'm sure you guys don't either if you're on this channel. Um, I have the ability to, but it's not something that uh, happens naturally. And I just want you to play what's in my head. You know, that's all I'm trying to do. And if on this channel, like, if you guys can't hear what's happening in your head, if you're like, nothing's happening in my head, well, there is something happening in your head. Uh, and we're going to uncover what's happening, right? And there's, there's stuff, there's music playing in your head. It's just, you might not know how to access it, right? And, you know, along this journey, we're going to we're gonna figure it out together and we're going to grow together. You know, take, take you from here and build you up to here, right? So that's what this channel is all about. You know, making intermediate players just really, really studio grade, tour grade ready. Um, so, 
with that. <clears throat> Thank you so much for tuning in, and uh, I will see you guys next week.